So, magandang araw sa inyong lahat. So, again, welcome to our subject. And for today, we are about to discuss analyzing business transactions. Okay, so just sit back, relax, take down notes. And if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. Or even you can comment your question on this video. Okay, so let's start our discussion. So, bago po tayo mag-proceed with the analyzing of business transaction proper, let us first discuss the phases of the accounting process. So, if you have remembered our discussion in the introduction of accounting, we have one definition there which defines accounting as an art of recording, classifying, summarizing, in a significant manner that is in terms of money, transactions, and events. Okay, and interpreting the results thereof. That was actually the definition from the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. So that particular definition gave us the phases of the accounting process. So we have four phases here. First of which is the recording process. So when we talk about the recording process, it is the process wherein um, all of the financial transactions will be recorded in a systematical and chronological manner. So it is in a range no, or um, magkakasunod po siya or chronological siya based on the date of the transaction no, um, in the appropriate record. So actually, this recording uh, process is yung nabanggit din natin in our previous discussion about bookkeeping. Okay, so um, analyzing the business transaction, which is uh, we're going to discuss today, no, is part of this recording process. Okay, also we will continue the discussion of this recording uh, phase. Okay, on our next video lecture. Okay, pag tayo po ay nag-record na proper. Kasi for today, we will just be analyzing, no, looking into um, the transaction. What does this transaction affect? Okay, and then um, later, pagdating na natin po sa um, journalizing na tinatawag natin on our next module, then dun na po talaga formally i-record po natin yung isang financial transaction. Okay, so that's our first phase. The next phase mentioned in the definition kanina was classifying. So pag sinabi po natin classifying, this is the process of sorting or grouping yung similar items that we have recorded okay, under a designated name, category, or account. So this classifying phase, uh, it will also be part of our discussion on the next module no, about what we so-called naman na posting. Okay? Then summarizing naman po, okay? when we talk about summarizing, it means uh, summarizing the data that we have already recorded and classified okay, in uh, an accounting period such as monthly, quarterly, or yearly. So itong summarizing phase na to, this is actually the process of preparing na po yung ating diniscuss in module number one na financial statements. Okay, so dyan na po yung pag-start natin ng pagbuo doon sa financial statement on which the various users of financial information no, would rely their decision making. Okay? And the last part of the phase in our accounting process is the interpreting. So pag sinabi natin interpreting, it's more on analyzation na po ng financial reports generated via the summarizing. So uh, do not be confused na baka mamaya Sinabi dito, analyzing financial report, yun na po yung i-discuss natin ngayon. Hindi po. What we are going to discuss for today is all about the analysis of the business transactions so that we can start our recording process. Okay? So I hope that it is clear for you no, um, for these four phases of our accounting process. Recording, classifying, summarizing, and interpreting. Okay, so uh, babalikan natin itong mga phases na to no? so, as we move forward doon sa ating mga discussion ng specific processes no? um, under these phases. Okay, so our topic for today is all about analyzing business transactions. And when we talk about business transactions, no? it is defined as an event okay, that has some effects to the resources of the business or the firm. Okay, so um, whatever is happening in the business, of course, no, um, which would affect its resources, those are considered as business transactions. Okay, uh, 
economic occurrence then yung um, other terminology for a business transaction which causes nga changes in the elements of our financial statements such as yung asset, liabilities, equity, or even yung atin ding mga income and expense items being discussed and introduced in our uh, module number one. And when we talk about also business transactions, it involves somehow exchange of value. So mame papaliwanag natin yung about sa exchange of values. So let me give you an example of a business transaction that uh, is considered as an event that affects our business uh, resources. Okay, one of which is uh, halimbawa po nag-invest yung owner, okay, ng cash o kaya naman po hindi man cash or let's say equipment, nag-invest siya, lupa, or what, that is now considered as a business transaction. Okay, because it increases the resources of our business. Another is bumili po tayo ng supplies for cash. So supplies are being used in the business, tama po ba? And cash is also a resource of our business or that's an asset. Okay, so um, that particular scenario is considered a business transaction din po because it affects the resources of the firm. Another is payment of salaries ng employees. Okay, so once we pay, we will give up cash. Okay, pero of course, bago natin bayaran yung employee, they may have already produced or provided us with services. Okay, so ayun din, example din yun ng exchange values. No? So we pay for cash, but the employees give us their services. Okay, then we provide services for cash. So if you are in the service business, Okay, we're in, let's say, for example, you are a car wash business. So, nag-provide ka na ng uh, car wash service sa uh, isang customer, then you receive cash, then that is also considered as a business transaction. Okay, because again, it increases our cash. And then, another would be owner uh, withdraw cash. So, pag sinabi pong withdraw, it means uh, kumukuha po ng money yung uh, owner doon sa ating business. Okay? So, for personal use na niya. Sir, uh, yung withdraw lang po ba ay cash lang po? Hindi naman lahat ng pagkakataon is uh, cash yung withdrawal. Halimbawa, uh, let's say, kung kayo po ay may sari-sari store, tapos yung owner kumuha ng sardinas, for example. So, gagamitin niya, nakakain niya na yon. So, that's already considered as a withdrawal. Pero hindi yon cash, di ba? Kasi that's a sardine. So, you can withdraw as an owner either your product of the business or even cash from the business. So, these are just some examples of business transactions. So, later we will be encountering more business transactions and let's try to analyze them. Okay? So, is it clear class for uh, the definition of the business transactions all right so again if you do have questions please let me know lang po on our respective chat boxes okay so this business transactions are actually classified into two okay we have the internal and external business transactions so let's try to distinguish ano po ba yung pinagkaiba ng internal or external so, when we talk about internal, these are transactions that occurs only within the business. Okay? So, internally within the business. So, let's say, for example, nagbayad tayo ng salaries to our employees. Okay? Or even uh, we use the supplies of our business na nabili na natin. Okay? Ano pa? Uh, we transact okay, um, with our, let's say, for example, um, usage of usage of equipment natin okay which we will be discussing in the future no okay so those are examples of internal transactions so again internal you you keep your eye on the transactions that occurs only inside the business while when we talk about external transactions these are transactions naman po that occurs between an outsider and the business so, halimbawa po, no, um, bumili tayo sa uh, our company is um, buying from another supplier. Okay? So, as the supplier is an outsider. So, that's considered as an external transaction. Okay? O kaya naman po, nagbayad tayo ng, uh, let's say, for example, um, utilities. Kuryente, bill ng uh, tubig, okay? um, bill ng... Um, Internet, okay, so those are considered as external 
uh, transactions. Okay, so um, whether internal or external yung isang business transaction, we will analyze that and in the future, we will be recording that for as long as, please take note of this, this business transactions have monetary effects. Okay, kasi meron po mga transactions na um, recordable okay, at meron din pong hindi. Okay? If the transaction has a monetary effect and it is recordable, no, ibig sabihin, okay, it affects already the resources of the business per se. Pero may mga business transactions din po na hindi nire-record. Okay? So let's say, for example, no, nakipag-deal ka lang. Okay? Halimbawa, nakipag-contrata ka lang with uh, another customer. Okay? Nakipag-contrata ka, nagpermahan lang ng kontrata, pero wala ka pa namang binibigay na services to that customer, eh di wala pa po talagang recordable business transactions. Okay? So, um, it would have already an effect to our resources automatically if we have already some sort of exchange of values. Okay? So, ayan. Uh, Pag-uusapan natin yan sa uh, mga susunod na mga examples natin. Okay? So let me introduce to you because of that uh, business transaction that we are going to analyze no uh, the concept of double entry bookkeeping okay so you have heard already the definition of bookkeeping in our module number 1 wherein it is the process that we uh, chronologically record no the transactions but ano po ba itong double entry bookkeeping na to so in the double entry bookkeeping no we need to um, take note that the business transactions, as mentioned to you a while ago, whether internal or external, have a dual effect. And for every value being received, there is uh, always a value being parted. So kaya po siya double entry bookkeeping system. Okay, it's because once that we have a business transaction, as mentioned to you a while ago, no, so there was an exchange of values. Okay, so meron tayong i-give up. So, meron pong um, resources na mababawasan sa atin, okay, or merong mag increase na resources probably, and then there would also be another um, element po natin in the financial statement which will also be affected. So, twofold effect of a transaction po yun. Okay, so which uh, it will materialize in module number three, no, kapag nirecord na natin, pero mamaya po, no, using our analysis, no, makikita nyo doon that as one element of the financial statement no, was being affected, another is also being affected. Okay, so yun po yung concepto ng double entry bookkeeping. Okay, so let's say for example, no, nag-purchase ka ng supplies for cash. Nabanggit natin to kanina. So you have the cash, okay, that's uh, an asset, no, diba, in our um, initial discussion in module number one. Okay, and then binayad mo yun Okay, para makakuha ka ng supplies. Okay, so affected yung cash mo, nabawasan, and then your supplies naman ay nag-increase kasi nakabili ka ng supplies. So ayan, no, two-fold effect yung isang business transaction na yun, and that's what we are going to apply yung double-entry bookkeeping system natin. Okay, another example. Okay, let's say providing services for cash. So nag-provide ka ng services. Okay. Uh, remember in our definition in module number one about accrual basis, pag nag-provide ka ng service or nag-render ka ng service, anong meron? Sabi natin under the definition of accrual basis, diba, pag nag-render ka ng service, then we will have an, an income or a revenue. Tama po ba? So you will be recording revenue okay? and then ano yung na-receive natin? Cash. Okay, so we receive a cash kapalit ng services na na-perform natin. So these are different elements, di ba, as we have discussed before. So ganun po yung uh, concept ng double entry bookkeeping system. There would be, again, two elements of our financial statements okay, or, or two separate accounts that will be affected. Okay, so more uh, explanation of this, no, pag nandun na tayo ta sa talagang recording process na um, i-record na po natin. So if we pre ko na, yun yung konsepto ng debit and credit kung narinig nyo na po yun. Okay? So, ayan po, no, uh, mamaya as we analyze, no, we will have um, that what we so-called um, double entry bookkeeping through the use of uh, the, the analysis natin. Okay?
So this business transactions, no, to continue with the discussion, are being supported by what we so called source documents. Okay, so for every business transaction, may mga source document po yan. May mga documentation, may mga supporting papers po yan. So these source documents as defined are evidences of transactions that contains the details ng particular business transaction na yun. Okay, it's an evidence of the transaction and then it contains the data of that transaction. So for every source document, as mentioned to you a while ago, it connotes a business transactions that may somehow trigger our accounting process. Pero take note ha, it will only be the recordable business transactions no, that we are uh, going to use no, for our recording process or starting the accounting process. Okay? So let me give you an example of source document. No? So let's say Recibo. Okay, so receipts, kapag nakakita tayo ng resibo, for example, anong ibig sabihin nun? Depende sa point of view. Pag tayo yung nakareceive ng resibo, ibig sabihin, okay, we have purchased something. Di ba? May binayaran tayo something. Okay, so pwede na give up tayo ng cash and then may nareceive tayo na item. Okay, o kaya naman, kapag tayo naman po yung namimigay ng resibo, kasi di ba, baka nag-provide tayo ng service or nagbenta po tayo, then nakareceive tayo ng cash, okay, and then nag-provide tayo ng service or nung product natin. So that's an example of a source document. Huh? So in a receipt, aware naman kayo, di ba, pag nakakita na kayo ng resibo, nandun yung amount kung magkano yung transaction, ano yung date ng transaction, so it contains the data or details of that particular business transaction. Another would be checks. Okay, check eh. Okay, so pag nakita kayo ng check eh, pag ikaw yung nakareceive, edi you'll be receiving it as cash, no? Probably. Pag ikaw naman yung nag-issue ng check eh, then that means you might have paid something. Okay, so it contains as well the data of the transaction, okay, the date or even the amount of what you have being paid. Okay. Another source document would be a promissory note. Okay, so um, if you're familiar with the promissory note, so it is a promise to pay a some certain in money. Okay, so um, nakalagay dyan that you are promising to pay somebody. No? Kapag ikaw yung nakareceive nun, promissory note na yun, of course, um, that would be an example for you na tinatawag natin na notes receivable kasi kokolektahin mo yun eh di ba nagpa-promise sa yung isang uh, customer no na ayan no babayaran kita at certain point in time okay receivable ang tawag doon for those that we haven't yet collected okay and this is notes kasi it was being supported by a promissory note samantalang pag ikaw naman po yung nagbigay ng promissory note, no, yung business mo nag-issue ng promissory note, then that means meron ka naman pong utang, no? Kung kanino mo man po binigay yung promissory note. So that will be also a notes payable naman. Okay, so this promissory note will contain yung amount kung magkano yung transaction or even possible din no na may interest. Kasi di ba pag nangutang, most likely meron pong interest yan nakalakip. Okay? So that's another source document and then we have also voucher okay cash voucher okay so it contains the data naman na uh, sometimes using what we so called voucher system which we will be discussing in the future no so it is uh, supporting an a transaction no about let's say pag tayo nag issue ibig sabihin uh, tayo po yung uh, magbabayad no in this case Okay, so these are just some examples of source documents, no? but in the future, we will uh, also encounter madami pa pong uh, source documents. Okay, actually, example pa, bill ng kuryente, di ba? Uh, ibig sabihin, pag nakareceive ka ng bill ng kuryente, no, you need to pay something. May utang ka doon sa Miralco, for example, or even bill ng tubig. Okay, so I hope that that is clear. Ha? So for every... Um, source document, meron po yung kalakip na business transaction. Okay? Please take note plus sa uh, itong mga dinidiscuss natin ito ay all related lang sa business. Kung babalikan natin yung module 1, we have the business entity concept okay, or uh, entity concept that the owners are separate and distinct from the business. So we only record in the business whatever happens in the business and not the personal transactions 
of the owners. Okay? So I hope that that is clear, ha? Huh? Okay? So now, let's proceed with the analysis of the business transaction proper, no? Via the use of what we so-called accounting equation. Okay? So, um, our accounting equation actually denotes the uh, what we so-called elements of the financial statement. And ito po yung ating basic accounting equation. No? The assets would be equal to the total of the liabilities plus capital. Okay? So, ito po yung ating uh, accounting equation which we will be using okay, in analyzing our business transactions which were supported by source documents. Okay, so let me explain uh, this accounting equation. So this equation actually represents yung resources being controlled by the business or that was actually the definition of the assets. Also, it represents the present obligation of the business or liabilities and the residual interest of the owners in the asset. Okay, or our capital or what is so called also as owner's equity. Okay, so ito po yung basic accounting equation po natin. Okay, by the way, no, um, if you want to interpolate it mathematically, no, pwede nyo rin pong, uh, ano yan, di ba? Pag, pwede kayong tanungin kung magkano yung capital, magkano yung liability, so you can mathematically interpolate it. Okay, so kung capital lang hinahanap, so that would be equal to liabilities, min uh, sorry, that would be equal to an asset minus the liabilities. So, pag liabilities naman pong hinahanap, so that would be equal to an asset minus your capital. Okay? So, this also states that the assets must always be equal to the liabilities and capital. So, this accounting equation, okay, na nakikita nyo ngayon, okay, it should always be equal starting this point in time na tayo po ay mag analyze until the end of the accounting process. So madami pa po tayong processes na maidi-discuss no, in our succeeding modules about the uh, totality of the accounting process. No, But please take note that any point on that process, you should always um, check and see that the assets are always equal to the liabilities and capital because that is the concept of what we have here in the accounting equation. Okay? So for every accountable event, no, uh, as mentioned kanina sa definition ng double entry bookkeeping, has a dual but self-balancing effect on the accounting equation. Sir, ano ibig sabihin nun? Ang gusto lang sabihin niyan, mamaya pag nag-analyze tayo, no? Halimbawa, tataas yung asset. Okay, naka-receive ka ng asset or bumili ka, okay? Then most likely it would affect either the liabilities natin or even it would affect the capital. Okay, naka-receive ka ng investment mula sa owner, okay? So there would be an increase in asset, then it would also have an effect to the capital. So not necessarily that for every business transactions, kailangan apektado lahat ng ito. Uh, what I am pointing here is just in case na may effect dito sa other side, dapat meron din pong effect doon sa other side. Kung no effect dito, then dapat no effect din po dito sa other side. Kasi we need to maintain the equality of the accounting equation okay, via the analysis of the twofold effect of business transactions under the double entry bookkeeping kanina. Okay? So, additional lang po no, in analyzing this aside from what we have mentioned a while ago, okay, that our capital Okay, in this accounting equation class, ha, kasi mamaya before we end this discussion, no, meron tayong tinatawag na expanded accounting equation. So mamaya i-explain ko na lang po yun. Pero um, at this basic accounting equation na meron po tayo, no, so our capital will be increased by investment. So pag nag-increase or pag nag-invest yung owners no, ng let's say cash o kaya naman nag-invest po ng kung ano man yung isang owner, pwede kasing mag-invest class ng cash, pwede rin mag-invest yung owner ng kanyang equipment, okay, then that will increase the capital. Okay, so tandaan niyan kasi mamaya once we analyze, no, pag may nakita tayong investment, it will go uh, and have an effect to our capital. Okay, even our uh, capital will be increased by net income. Sir, paano po natin malalaman yung net income? 
actually this net income is um, the difference between our income Okay, na discuss natin yan in module 1 that income are the increase in the resources of the business. Okay? And deduct after deducting what we so call expenses. Okay, net income is equal to the income less the expenses. Magkano yung um, benta natin, okay, minus lahat ng mga expenses po natin. So yun po yung net income. So may net income ka kapag mas mataas yung yung income kesa doon sa expenses. Okay? So, ayan, um, that uh, income and expense will have an effect to the capital. Actually, the income will increase the capital. So, pag meron tayo mamayang nakita na income item, no, it will increase the capital. Sir, paano natin masasabi na may income item? Balikan ulit natin yung definition ng accrual basis last time. So, kailan ulit magkakaroon ng income? Income will be recognized once we have earn no at kailan po natin masasabi na may na earn tayo if we have performed a service tama ba pag nagperform po tayo ng service kung tayo po ay uh, service business or kung sakali man po na tayo po ay uh, merchandising or manufacturing we have delivered goods naman okay so, by the way, here in our um, ABM part one, we will just be discussing service business. So, you will be expecting na perform services yung makikita ninyo. And once may perform services, then we will be recording already income. Okay? Samantalang expenses naman po will decrease our capital. Sir, kailan nga ulit tayo magre-record na expenses? So, as mentioned also in the definition of accrual basis, expenses will be recorded once we have incurred. Okay? At pag sinabing incurred, ano ibig sabihin nun? It means na nagamit na natin yung isang item or baka nag-expire na po siya. Okay? So that's uh, again income increasing our capital okay mamaya in the analysis and expenses will decrease our capital okay so i hope that that is clear huh? again if you do have questions please let me know so let me just erase this because i have just one uh, bullet pa okay so also in the accounting equation no Withdrawals of cash or other assets. So, nabanggit ko kanina yon na pag nag-withdraw po tayo, it means we are getting something from the business, either cash or other assets, no? By the owners for personal use will decrease our capital. Okay? So, yung withdrawal, magdi-decrease uh, yung capital po natin. So, we will be using those concepts, no? Once we analyze mamaya business transactions. Okay? So, clear po ba tayo dito? Do you have any questions or clarifications? Alright, very good. So, ngayon po, let's try na to analyze. So, these are just some business transactions. No? So, babanggitin ko yung mga pwedeng source documents dito. And then, let's try to analyze it using our accounting equation. Okay? So, first, uh, we bought equipment paying cash. Okay, bumili tayo ng equipment. So, equipment is uh, pwedeng machinery yeah, or, or the equipment per se. Okay, and we pay cash. Okay, ano po yung pwedeng source documents dyan? Resibo, di ba? Yung receipt nung ating uh, binili na equipment. Okay, so pag bumili ka ng equipment, what will happen? Okay, so dito na natin makikita yung twofold effect. Okay, so nung bumili ka ng equipment, okay, if you... Uh, if you have remembered our discussion in module number one, equipment is considered as an asset. Okay? So, nung bumili ka ng equipment mo, mag increase yung ating amount ng equipment. Okay? Tataas yung value niya. Okay? And then, of course, you have paid cash. Ano bang classification ng cash? Cash is actually an asset din po ng business. So, yung cash naman natin, dahil nag-give up po tayo ng cash, then our cash will also decrease. Okay? So in this point of view, no, tumaas yung equipment natin dahil nakabili tayo, okay, nadagdagan yung equipment natin, eh, at dahil nagbayad tayo, nabawasan naman yung cash natin. So kung mapapansin mo, may total effect ba yan sa asset? Ang sagot, wala. 
Bakit? Kasi halimbawa, bumili ka ng 10,000 na equipment. So, madadagdagan yung equipment mo na 10,000, then yung cash mo naman mababawasan ng 10,000. So, pag pinag-minus mo yan, ano ibig sabihin? Zero effect lang siya. Okay? So, no effect siya sa asset in totality, pero in individual account or uh, individual na uh, part ng element, no, meron siyang effect. Okay? Eh sir, paano yan? Kung walang effect sa asset, does it mean wala rin effect sa liabilities or capital? Tanungin mo. Okay? Sarili mo. Um, meron ba tayong um, inutang dyan? Wala naman, di ba? So no effect siya doon sa liabilities. Okay? Sa capital, may expense ba tayo? Wala. Di ba? Meron ba tayong income dito? Wala. Um, Meron ba tayong withdrawal? Wala rin. So, in totality for the capital, no effect. So, this is an example of a transaction that does not have any effect on the totality of all of the elements or the assets, liabilities, and capital. Pero, ayun, may effect siya doon sa ating uh, individual items in the element. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear. Next no, na transaction is purchase supplies on credit. So bumili ka. The business bought supplies. Okay? Supplies is actually an asset. Okay? On credit. So ano ibig sabihin ng on credit? So pag nakita nyo, di ba, um, no credit doon sa isang tindahan, di ba? Ibig sabihin bawal, bawal sila magpautang or ayaw nila magpautang. Pero ito, no, here in our discussion today, pag nakita nyo po yung word na on credit, or on account no pare-parehas po yan ibig sabihin kay pag purchase po yan ibig sabihin bumili tayo tapos inutang natin okay inutang po natin yung binili natin so what does it mean okay it will increase our asset kasi supplies is an asset okay and then dahil nangutang po tayo kay may obligation tayong kailangan bayaran then it will also increase our liabilities Okay? May effect ba siya sa capital? Nagamit na ba natin yung supplies? Hindi pa naman. ba? Diba? So wala pang effect sa capital. May income ba tayo na kinita mula dito? Wala kasi binili lang natin siya on credit. Tapos um, nag-withdraw ba tayo? Hindi rin. So for the capital, no effect. Okay? Napapansin nyo na ngayon that there are twofold effect of every transaction. Okay, so one part uh, increases, so your asset increases, then the liability in Increases. Okay? Then the owner invested cash. So, uh, nag-invest ng cash sa business. So, ibig sabihin, yung cash ng business or actually that will be classified as asset no, will also increase. So, madadagdagan na naman yung cash mo. Okay? May obligation ka ba or liabilities? Hindi ba? Wala naman dyan sa transaction na yan. And then sabi, invested. Ano bang uh, diniscuss natin kanina? If there will be an investment, then it will increase our capital. Okay? So, uh, ang effect naman ng transaction ng investment is to increase the asset and increase the capital. Okay? Next would be paid monthly rent expense. Okay? So, um, Nagbayad na po tayo. So what does it mean? Mababawasan po yung ating cash or yung asset natin will decrease. May utang ba tayo? Wala naman, di ba? So no effect sa liabilities. And then, since we have an expense, okay? Sir, bakit ka nagkaroon ng expense? Because we have used it. Okay? Most likely, nagbayad tayo because we have used already uh, the rent. Okay? So as mentioned to you a while ago, no uh, expenses will decrease the capital. Okay? So, ayan yung effect ng payment of rent expense for the month. Another would be, uh, we charge customer for services provided on account. So, ano ibig sabihin nito, sir? Charge customer. Tanong yung may sarili mo. Bakit tayo nag-charge sa customer? Hindi ba dahil nagbigay na tayo ng services? So, pag nag-provide na tayo ng service doon sa customer po natin, dapat singilin na natin siya, di ba? Pero anong sabi? Naningil ka na ba? Naningil ka lang, pero on account pa lang. Okay? Uh, charge customer for services provided on account. Okay? So, pag nakita nyo rin po itong on account na to, okay, unlike dun sa kanina na purchase, no? bumili ka tapos inutang mo. Ito naman, nagbigay ka ng service pero pinautang mo muna. Okay? So, nung pinautang mo yon that is actually representing yung tinatawag natin na receivable. 
okay? Kasi pautang yan. Kasi tayo yung nagbigay ng services. So, alam mo na ha, pag pinautang mo yung um, kakilala mo, okay, papautangin mo siya. Ang tawag mo na dun sa pinautang mo sa kanya ay receivable, okay? Kindly pay my receivables, okay? Sarat lang, okay? So, going back to our discussion, no? So, this receivable is actually considered as an asset. So, dahil meron kang receivable mula sa customer, then it will increase your asset. Okay? Wala ka naman obligation dyan kasi ang may obligation ay si customer. Okay? And then, um, dahil we have provided services. So, what does it mean? Once we provide services, we have an income. Diba? At pag may income, anong sabi kanina? It will increase our capital. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear class, ha? So, ina-analyze natin siya based dun sa mga na banggit natin na rules kanina. Okay, continuing, we have received payment from customers on account. So, ito na, siningil mo na. Okay, kaya nakareceive ka na ng bayad ni customer. So, nakareceive ka ng bayad ni customer, okay, so, yung cash mo, tataas. Cash is an asset, di po ba? Okay, so, tataas yung cash mo, madadagdagan yung amount po ng cash. Pero, ang sabi, saan nang galing yung cash? Siningil mo si customer. So, nang naningil ka, okay, yung accounts receivable mo, okay, ay mababawasan na. So, that receivable, as mentioned to you a while ago, is also an asset. So, nabawasan yung receivable, tumaas yung cash. So, in total, ano yung effect? Walang effect, di ba? Walang effect sa totality ng asset. Okay, so same with the liabilities and capital. Sir, hindi ba yan income? Kasi nakasingil tayo. Hindi. Okay? Kung babalikan mo ulit yung definition of accrual basis, no, ang income ay nire-record only when it is earned. Kailan ba na-earned? Kapag na-provide na natin yung services. So actually related itong charge to customer on account at saka receive payment na yan. So ito, pinautang mo muna. Dito natin ni-record yung income kaya nag-increase yung capital. Pero nung siningil na natin, kay ang naapektuhan lang is yung cash mo tumaas tapos yung receivable mo kay ay nabawasan dahil nasingil na po natin. Okay? So, tandaan yun ha, uh, ayon sa definition of rural basis, uh, income is recognized once it is earned regardless when the cash is received. So, hindi porket na-receive mo yung cash, income po yun. Kasi ang titignan natin is, have you performed the services? Okay, or na-deliver mo na ba yung goods? Okay, so I hope that that is clear. And lastly for this, no, we have paid the supplies purchased on credit. So related ito actually dun sa second item, no? Sa second item, uh, nangutang tayo ng supplies. Ngayon, binabayaran na natin. Okay? So nung nagbayad ka, of course, nabawasan yung cash mo, which is an asset. So your asset decreases. And then, uh, your liability, di ba? Nung una, nangutang ka. So nung binayaran mo yung utang mo, then it will decrease now your liabilities. Okay? And then, may effect ba sa capital? Ginamit ba natin? Okay, wala wala dito yung usapan ng gamit ha. We have just paid it. Yun yung sabi sa transaction. So, yung payment naman wala po yung effect sa ating capital. Okay? So, are we clear on this class? So, this is just a general mamaya we will be uh, extending our discussion pa via examples. Okay? So, again, if you do have questions, please let me know lang po. Okay, very good. So, I hope na nakakasunod pa kayo. Okay? So, to give you a more specific no, way how to analyze business transactions, no. so let's have more examples. By the way, class, no, um, hindi pa ito talaga yung formal recording process. Okay? Uh, palagi kong sinasabi sa students ko that this analyzing business transaction only happens in the mind. Okay, sa utak lang yan ang uh, nangyayari actually. Kasi uh, pagdating natin sa module 3, no, so doon talaga formally i-record yung mga business transactions na yan. So doon pa lang talaga tayo nagsusulat. No need for you to prepare this na mga dinidiscuss ko ngayon, pero we are just representing and discussing it today um, in this tabular approach kasi for you to um, easily understood it bago tayo dumiretso sa recording. 
Okay? So, hinay-hinay lang tayo. So, we are um, writing it today okay, in this analyzing uh, business transactions. But again, pagdating natin sa susunod na module, then it will just happen on your mind. Okay? Ipipicture out nyo na lang. Okay? Ano yung nag-increase? Ano yung apektuhan? Okay? Nag-increase or decrease po ba siya? Okay? So, to give you more example, okay, so we have here uh, our first problem example. Okay? So, um, I have already prepared an analysis table. No? So, in, in your mga activities uh, in the assignment and the future quiz na meron kayo, no? so uh, you will also be doing the same no? that we will be uh, analyzing it via a tabular approach muna. Okay? So, as you can see here, we have the various dates and then the transactions. Then, um, dito po, no, unlike with the previous na um, analysis na wala pong amounts, no, um, in totality natin tinignan yung asset, liabilities, and capital. Dito po, sa example na to, no, i-individualize na natin. So, as you can see, no, the orange one, the cash, accounts receivables, supplies, and equipment, these are actually representing the assets. Then, accounts payable, okay, payable, so it's a liability, and then we have the capital. Okay? So, ipaplat na po natin siya individually on what are the affected accounts talaga. And then, sir, para saan yung remarks? So, ganito class, gagamitin natin itong remarks column na to for those that affects the capital. Okay? Pag naapektuhan yung capital, lalagyan natin ng remarks. Pag hindi naapektuhan, leave it as blank. Okay? Sir, ano pong ilalagay namin? Yung kaninang inanalyze natin. Anong sabi? Investment increases the capital. Di po ba? So, pag nag-increase yung capital because of investment, ilalagay mo lang dito sa remarks, investment. Okay, pag um, meron kang income kasi may na-earn ka na services, okay, then lagay natin income or revenue, okay, or specific then na accounts. Pag may nagastos naman, di ba, expenses decreases the capital so we can have the expenses. And then ano pa yung last kanina? The capital was being affected by withdrawal. So pag nag-withdraw yung owner, then ilalagay natin withdrawal. Okay? So ayan. No, pag again, pag walang effect sa capital, leave as blank mo lang yung remarks. Okay, so let's start with the first transaction. Jimmy invested cash 200,000 to start his business. Okay? So, um actually this is um a service for providing a uh, um an IT service, no? So, hindi ko lang nalagay, pero that's an IT service actually, no? So, um, nag-invest siya ng cash na 200,000. So, si business, nung binigay ni Jimin yung cash niya, okay, the cash had increased by 200,000. By the way, pag positive lang po, or alam niyo naman sa mathematics, di ba, pag walang sign, then that means positive, okay, then it means it increases. Okay? Pag ganyan, no, it increases, Okay, pero kapag nakakita kayo mamaya ng naka-parenthesis, no, which uh, means negative sign in accounting, then th this uh, represents naman decrease. Okay? So, pag increase, ano lang, nat uh, natural lang na kagaya nito, 200,000. Pero pag nakita kayo naka-parenthesis mamaya, then that means decrease. Okay? So, dito kasi sa first transaction, it increases our cash because we have received in the business cash. And then, uh, yung iba, di ba, wala naman pong effect. Ano yung another na may effect? Yung capital po natin. Okay? So, hindi na natin lalagyan yung may mga uh, walang effect, ha? So, ano lang yung may effect, yun lang po yung lalagyan natin ng values. Okay? So, it increases our capital because of what? Investment. Ayan, may remarks tayo kasi naapektuhan yung capital natin. Okay? So, pag nasa module 3 na kayo, ano na lang yan? No? Isipin nyo na lang. Okay? Increase the cash, increase the capital, then diretso recording pagdating natin sa module 3. Okay? Are we clear on that class? I hope na nasusundan nyo ako. Ha? So, medyo uh, kinoconnect ko na rin siya in uh, the next discussion po natin. Okay? To continue, no? So, purchase computer equipment for 65000 so, bumili ka ng computer equipment, okay, 65,000. Sinabi bang inutang? Hindi. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Binayaran na natin siya ng cash. So, it will decrease the cash by 65,000 kasi pinambayad natin para sa computer equipment. Now, ano yung other effect? 
Okay, the other effect would increase the equipment. Okay, so tataas po yung equipment natin dahil bumili tayo ng equipment. Oh, no remarks kasi wala namang effect sa capital. So kagaya ito ng example ko kanina na it only affects the one side, no, the asset. Okay, pero in totality, no, wala po siyang effect in the total asset since nabawasan lang yung cash na dagdagan yung equipment which are all assets. Okay. Next, no, November 9, computer supplies in the amount of 25,000 was purchased on account. Oh, bumili ka ng computer supplies. Binayaran mo ba? Hindi pa. Inutang natin. So pero no, uh, first our supplies will increase. So tataas po yung ating supplies by 25,000 kasi nadagdagan 'yon dahil sa purchase. But since inutang po natin, it will increase also the payable or the liabilities. Okay? So, ayan. Yan yung twofold effect, di ba? May effect sa asset, may effect din doon sa liability. Next, collected 12,000 in cash for services performed. So, nakareceive po tayo ng cash. So, tataas yung cash natin by 12,000. Now, the question, bakit ka nakareceive ng cash? Because you perform services. So, nung nag-perform ka ng service, meron kang income. Di po ba? Okay. So, income increases our capital by 12,000. And since affected yung capital, okay, lagay tayo ng uh, remarks natin, service revenue or income. Okay? Next, uh, November 15, Jimin paid 8,000 to 7-11 Bills Express for monthly utilities. So, meron po tayong utilities na binayaran. Uh, hindi po yung specify pero pwedeng kuryente yan or tubig or internet. Di po ba? So, nagbayad si Jimin. So, mababawasan yung cash niya by 8,000. Okay? And then, uh, ano ba yung binayaran niya? Utilities. Bakit siya nagbayad? Nagamit niya kasi yung utilities. So, what does it mean? Okay? Nung nagamit yung utilities, it now represent yung expense po natin. So, it will now decrease the capital because of the utilities expense. Okay? So, nasusundan sana ako klasa. Again, pag may questions kayo, please let me know on our chat box. So to continue, no, uh, November 19, Jimin made a partial payment of 15,000 for the November 9 purchase on account. So may utang tayo ng November 9 na 25,000. Pero baka kasi wala pang masyadong pera si Jimin or gusto niya muna ng uh, partial lang muna bayaran, then nagbayad po siya 15,000 lang. So nung nagbayad siya, then it will decrease our cash by 15,000. But ano po yung affected na other one? Okay, dahil binabayaran niya yung utang, it will now decrease your liability which is your accounts payable. So nabawasan na po yung utang natin by 15,000. Okay? November 21. The company has a service agreement with a several people to maintain um, and update their websites weekly. Okay, so nagkaroon siya ng service agreement with various customers. Now, Jimin billed these clients for $45,000 for the services already rendered during the month. Okay, so uh, with regards to the um, service agreement, no, nung nagpirmahan po sila, wala pang effect yan. So that's a business transaction that is non-recordable or hindi po i-record na na-mention ko po kanina sa inyo. Pero itong pangalawang sentence na nag-bill na daw si um, Jimin sa mga clients no, kasi nag-perform na siya ng service. So nung nag-bill siya, uh, by the way, nag-bill lang po siya. Ibig sabihin, hindi pa po yan binabayaran ni customer ha? kasi parang bill yan ng kuryente. No? Kapag nakareceive ka, ibig sabihin, ini-inform ka lang po na meron kang utang. So ganun din yung ginawa ni Jimin. Binil niya lang yung mga customers. Hindi pa naman siya nangungulekta. So in that case, dahil uh, parang services on account yan or hindi pa binabayaran, then may sisingilin pa tayo. So that would be an accounts receivable. So it will be increased by 45,000. Okay? And then, um, since the services have been performed, then it will increase our capital because we have also a service revenue. Okay? So I hope that that is clear ha. Pag sinabing cash or binayaran na, then dapat nasa cash short. Pero dahil hindi pa naman sinabing binayaran na bill pa lang, it will go to 
the accounts receivable. Okay? So let me continue. On November 24, the amount of 29,000 were received from the client billings dated November 21. So ayan, no, nakapangolekta na tayo ng ating uh, bill o binil kanina 21. So it will increase our cash by 29,000. Okay, dahil nakakolekta tayo. And then dahil nabawasan na po yung um, utang ni client, then it should decrease the accounts receivable. Okay? So again, it does not necessarily mean na nakakolekta tayo, that's an income. Remember that uh, regardless when the cash is received, no, for as long as we have rendered the services, dun lang po natin i-record yung income. Kaya nasa 21 yung income or revenue, okay? And sa 24 po is only the collection. Okay? Next would be on the 26th. So, Jimin paid his assistant designer salaries of 16000 for the month. So, si assistant designer is uh, an employee of Jimin in the company. Okay? So, nagbigay na si employee ng service niya sa company. Okay? So, um, we have paid it. So, nung nagbayad tayo, it will decrease our cash. Okay? Nagbayad tayo, nabawasan na yung cash natin. And then, since um, ang tanong dyan, bakit tayo nagbayad? Nagbigay na ng service employee. So, we have used the services of that employee. So, nung na-use natin yung service na employee, then it will decrease our capital because we have incurred a salary expense. Okay? Naging expense siya kasi we have used the services of the employee. Okay? And then, uh, lastly na po, no? Jimin withdrew 15000 from the business for personal use. Okay? So, nag-withdraw si Jimin ng 15000 Okay? So, uh, anong ibig sabihin nun? Okay? Mababawasan yung cash natin by 15000 And then, because there was a withdrawal, then it will decrease our capital. Okay? Withdrawal. Okay, so ganyan po mag-analyze nung uh, business transactions presented here in example number one. Okay, so to finish it up, no, so we want to know magkano pa po yung natitirang cash natin, accounts receivables, and the other elements. So you can um, use your calculator to add. Pwede nyo pong i-pause for a while, no, itong video, and then you calculate. Okay, lahat ng mga naka-absolute value, no, so... Um, Plus yun, pag naka parenthesis, then deduct. So, for cash, for example, 200,000 minus 65,000 plus 12,000 minus, minus 8,000 minus 15,000 plus 29,000 minus 16,000 then minus 15,000. So, that's uh, a difference in total of 122,000. Okay? For the accounts receivable, you have 45,000 minus 29,000. So that's a net of 16,000. Okay. And then for the supplies, bring down lang po 25,000. For the equipment, we have a total of 65,000. Okay. And then for the accounts payable, um, 25,000 kanina, then minus 15,000. So may natitira pa tayong utang na 10,000. Okay, and then lastly for the capital, uh, two hundred thousand for the investment, minus twelve thousand for the uh, sorry plus twelve thousand for the service revenue, minus eight thousand for the utilities expense, plus again another forty five thousand for the revenue, and salaries expense sixteen thousand naka minus and minus the withdrawal of fifteen thousand, so we have a net capital remaining of two hundred eighteen thousand. Okay, so are we clear on that class? Do you have any questions or clarifications? Okay, so bago natin tapusin itong example one natin, okay, so eventually you want to check. No? We want to prove kung yung asset ba is equal to the liabilities plus capital. Okay, so to check it, ang pwede po natin gawin is to add all of the assets. So add nyo po itong cash, accounts receivable, supplies, and equipment. So pag in-add nyo yan, actually that will be equal to 228,000. So that's the totality of the assets na 228,000. 
Okay? And then equals daw sa 10,000 na liabilities, nag-iisa lang po yun, the accounts payable, and then your capital is 218,000. Okay? So kung titignan ninyo, no, 10,000 plus 28,000 na, uh, 10,000 na liabilities plus 218,000 na capital, so that's also equal to the 228,000. So equal ba yung accounting equation natin? Yes. Okay? So very good. Okay, so you have uh, finished already uh, some set of transactions using this example number one. Okay? So again, if you do have questions po, please let me know. Okay? So I hope that it is clear, ha? Okay. So, nag-transition ako sa other file class. So, this is our second and last example for this uh, discussion. Okay. So, we have the various transactions. Okay. And then, um, we will have also the um, tag dito, mga accounts. No? So, yung capital notation, this represents the uh, remarks kanina. Okay. Ngayon po, um, Unlike with the first example, naglagay na po ako ng balance. So ano ibig sabihin nitong beginning balance na to? Okay? This may uh, define that last month, okay? Kasi ngayon itong transactions na ibibigay natin or i-discuss natin is actually for the month of December. Okay? December 2020. So ito pong beginning balance, this represents yung total kagaya ng ginawa natin kanina, 'di ba? Tinotal natin yung per account, no? So this beginning balance was the balance last month. Okay? So we will just carry it over to December, okay, which will be our starting point no, for the transactions naman po on the month of December. Okay? So itong mga amounts na to nang galing na to doon sa previous month. Hindi ko na mapapakita dito because uh, we have just um, given it. Okay? So pwede nyong i-check class no, kung tama ba at the beginning yung totality ng debit and credit. So kung makikita nyo po, pag in ko itong cash to equipment, okay, kung makikita nyo po dito sa baba, no, um, yung cursor, no, um, the sum is 131,710. Okay? So equal ba siya with our liabilities and capital initially? Okay, so 12,000, 3,030 plus 16,000 or 116,680. So yes, parehas po sila na 131,710. Kaya ako po ginawa yan just to check no, na equal uh, at the start yung uh, assets is equal to liabilities plus capital. Kasi pag hindi po yan nagmatch no sa dulo, hindi rin magmamatch. So uh, we have mentioned a while ago that the um, processes natin okay, in analysis up to matapos po yung ating accounting uh, process discussion, no, um, our accounting equation should always be equal. Okay? So, ayan. Okay? So, uh, yan po yung beginning balance. Now, let's proceed with the first transaction. So, ang sabi po, paid in advance, two months rent at 3000 per month. So, ngayon po, no, nagbayad naman tayo ng renta. Okay, uh, wala kang sariling building, nagbayad ka po ng renta mo, no? Pero ang binayaran niya sabi sa problem 2 months. Okay? So 3000 per month, so magkano po yung total na binayaran natin? Okay, very good. Ang total na binayaran po natin ay 6000. Okay? So kung nagbayad tayo ng 6000, ibig sabihin mababawasan po yung ating cash by 6000. Okay? So, naka-negative 6,000 na po. Ngayon, uh, nung nagbayad ka, kanina, di ba, nung nag-analyze tayo, possible expense na siya. Pero dahil advance mo pa lang naman binayaran, pwede natin gamitin itong tinatawag natin na prepaid rent account. Okay? So, yung prepaid rent represents the advance payment of rent po natin. Okay? So, uh, yung prepaid rent po natin, dahil nagbayad tayo, will increase by 6,000. Okay? So I hope that that is clear ha. Prepaid rent is also an asset, okay, to represent all of the advance payment natin of rents. Okay, wala pong capital notation ha kasi hindi naman naapektuhan yung capital. Um by the way class, no, um baka pagdating natin sa future ma-confuse kayo. Actually, itong prepaid rent na to, pwede rin talagang ilagay sa expense. Okay? So pwede ko rin tanggalin ito dito. Okay? Ilagay ko po yung 
uh, deduction sa capital. Pwede rin po yun. Kasi there are actually alternatives. Pero that alternative will be discussed to you in module number 4 pa. Kaya ngayon, for the meantime, no, para hindi kayo makonfuse, ilalagay ko muna siya sa prepaid rent. Okay? Ayan. So, next transaction po tayo. No? So, um, purchase office equipment for uh, 53,000 on account. Okay? So, on account. So, um, una, no? ano yung binili natin? Office equipment. So, our office equipment or the equipment will increase by 53,000. Okay? Tataas siya. Pero dahil nangutang po tayo, sabi inutang natin on account, then it will increase our okay, accounts payable. Sir, bakit hindi utilities? Ang utilities po kasi ay para sa utilities lang, yung bill ng kuryente, tubig, or as mentioned to you kanina, no, um, internet for example. Yung notes naman, hindi naman po sinabi na meron tayong promissory note, di ba? So, um, accounts payable po yung pinaka uh, the best na gagamitin natin. Okay? So, um, Asset yung equipment, nag-increase, and then your accounts payable also increases. Okay? So, wala rin capital notation kasi it does not affect the capital. Okay? So, to continue po, uh, receive a bill from my NILAD, 1,250. Okay? Nakareceive ka pa lang ng bill. Hindi pa naman po ito what? Hindi pa naman po ito nababayaran. So, wala pang effect sa cash. Wala pong naging effect sa asset. Okay, kasi wala pa naman tayong nilabas na asset. So, madadagdagan lang po yung utang natin. So, may utilities payable na tayo kasi too big yan, di ba? Utility. So, tataas yung liability natin by 1,250. And then, of course, no, um, bakit ba tayo nakareceive ng bill? Ibig sabihin, may nagamit tayo, di ba? Nung may nagamit tayo na, na too big, then that is actually representing what? expense, di ba? So, kung expense yan, that will be a deduction to our capital. Okay? So, there was a deduction to the capital because of what we so-called utilities expense. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear, ha? So, ito po ay isa sa example ng no effect in all of the elements din naman or I mean, no effect in totality, no? Uh, for asset, Pero sa liabilities, nag-increase siya and then the capital is nag-decrease naman po. Okay? Next, um, December 5. Okay, so receive repair services. Okay, so naka-receive po tayo ng repair services. So malamang yung business ni Jungkook is actually a repair uh, company, no? Uh, amounting to 43,500 and received a check for the same amount. So naka-receive daw tayo ng check eh. So typically that will be representing a cash, di ba? Sabi natin kanina yung check eh, it somehow represents a cash. So it will increase our um, cash by 43,500 because we received a check. Ngayon, um, bakit tayo naka-receive ng check eh? Um, di ba? Isa lang na may explanation yan. We have provided services and if we provide services, then it will be an income. So it will increase our capital. So Junko Capital will increase by 43,500 because of a service revenue. Okay, or service income okay, because of the repairs we provided. Okay, so I hope that that is clear. Next, um, return defective supplies no, amounting to 550, uh, 550 pesos uh, previously purchased for cash on November 30. Okay, so isipin nyo, sir, bakit para saan to? No? Na-confuse na siguro kayo. Um, last November 30, bumili ka ng supplies. Kaya may supplies dito sa beginning balance, di po ba? Okay, ngayon, uh, nung December 6, Okay, baka tinitignan mo ngayon, gusto mo sanang gamitin, na-check mo, ay, may defect pala yung supplies na binili ko. Okay, so um, binili natin siya for cash. So you have options. Pwede mo siyang um, papalitan or pwede mo siyang ipa-refund. Dito hindi po binanggit. No? Typically in this case, no, it will be a refund kasi binili natin siya for cash. So nabawa, bumili ka sa um, isang tindahan, no, may sira siya, pwede mong ipapalitan or ipa-refund na lang. So dito we can again say na dahil walang binanggit, no, we can have a refund. Okay, so nung nag-refund, ano nangyari? 
na ibalik sa iyo yung pera mo, di ba? So bumalik sa iyo yung cash ng 550,000. Ah, <laughs> sorry, 550 pesos. Okay? And then what happens to your supplies? Dahil pina-refund mo na nga lang, then yung supplies natin ay okay, nabawasan. Okay? So this is an example of uh, a refund ha. Pero sir, paano yun pag pinalitan po? Okay, wala ka nang i-record dito kasi parang babawasan mo lang din yung supplies, dadagdagan mo yung supplies kasi napalitan siya ng same item. Pero ito, we have uh, presumed that this is uh, refunded kaya naka-receive tayo ng cash for the refund. Okay? So I hope that that is clear. Next, December 7, Jungkook invested additional cash for 75,000. So nag-invest ulit si Jungkook, marami siyang pera no. So naka-receive ulit ng uh, ng 75,000 cash yung business. So it will increase our cash by 75,000. And then uh, dahil may investment, investment increases our capital, di ba? So the 75,000 uh, increase for Jungkook capital, okay? Capital notation dahil naapektuhan yung capital. So there would be an additional investment or pwede rin pong investment na lang. Okay? And then to continue, um sent bill okay to several clients for services render. So nagbilling na naman tayo no dahil meron tayo na perform na services. Okay, so pag nag-send tayo ng bill, sabi natin kanina that will be representing an increase in our what? account receivable. So tataas yung account receivable natin by 33,250 and then bakit tayo naka um, nagbill kasi we have provided services. So services means we have a service revenue, okay? And then it will increase okay our junko capital by 32 uh, 33,250. Okay? So next December 9 paid for last month's telephone bill 3030. Okay. So babayaran natin yung last month. Kung papansinin mo yung utilities payable sa beginning, 'di ba? 3330 'yon. So ibig sabihin, yan yung binabayaran natin. Okay? So nung nagbayad ka, okay, it will decrease your cash by 3030. Okay. Now, expense ba siya? Hindi. Bakit? Kailan ba ginamit 'yon? Last month. So kung last month 'yan, it means that again, nasa utilities payable. So ang binabayaran natin was the utilities payable. So it should have a decrease in our utilities payable. Okay? So kung hindi sana sinabi na last month 'yan, let's say paid uh, this month's telephone bill, so bawas sa cash and then bawas sana sa capital. Okay, pero ang binayaran nga natin is last month so uh, utilities payable po ang kabawasan niya. Okay? To continue, then we paid for employee salary 200 uh, 20,100. So nagbayad ulit tayo so nabawasan yung cash natin by uh, 20,100. Okay? And then um, dahil nagbayad tayo, what's the reason? Okay, nagamit na natin yung services ng employee. So dahil nagamit natin, it means an expense, di po ba? Okay, so expense yan, kabawasan yan kay Junko Capital. Okay, that is because we have a salaries expense. No? Nagamit natin yung services ni employee. Okay, so to continue, December 11, okay, so si Junko daw nag-withdraw ng 15,000 to pay his personal credit card. So nagwithdrawal siya. Okay? So nung nagwithdraw siya, nabawasan yung cash natin by 15,000. Okay? So remember in our discussion kanina, um, withdrawal decreases the capital. Okay? So kabawasan siya sa Junko Capital and on our capital notation, it would be withdrawal. Okay? By the way, class, introduce ko na rin pala sa inyo, withdrawal or the other term would be drawing. Okay, hindi ka magdo-drawing ha. Pag nakita mo yung word na drawing here in the accounting, it means also withdrawal. So the owner get something, okay, in this example, cash from the business. Okay? Next, no, December 12, uh, nangutang tayo. No? We borrowed from the bank 100,000 and issued a 60-day 10% promissory note. Okay, nangutang tayo. 
Okay? Sir, bakit siya nangutang? Ang dami pa naman yung pera eh. Uh, depende yan, no? So, there are various reasons why company are borrowing. Okay? So, we cannot um, say kung ano man yung balak ni John Cook dito. Okay? Pero, um, ang sabi sa transaction, we have just... Um, dito, we have just uh, borrowed money from the bank. So, nung nangutang ka, malamang nadagdagan yung cash mo by 100,000. Okay? Ngayon, um, nung nangutang ka, sinabi, nag-issue ka ng promissory note. ba diba, nabanggit ko to kanina sa inyo in um, the business transaction source documents, no, yung promissory note, na kapag ikaw yung nagbigay ng promissory note, ibig sabihin ikaw yung may utang. Okay? So, or payable. So, dito, no, um, kung mapapansin nyo sa title, may notes payable tayo. So, that represents the liabilities or obligation natin na bayaran para doon sa related promissory note. So, that would be 100,000. Okay? Na utang natin. So, it will increase your notes payable by 100,000 dahil nag-issue ka ng promissory note. Okay? So, anong purpose ng 60 days? at saka 10%. Yung 10% is actually interest rate yan. Okay? So, pag-uusapan natin sa module 4 yung about sa interest. Yung 60 days, sir, um, within 60 days, babayaran din ni Jungkook yung utang niya. Ganun yung ibig sabihin nun. Okay? So, we will use those data pagdating natin sa module 4. Pero for the meantime, wala pa po yung effect. Okay? Because we are just analyzing the receipt of cash no? dahil dun sa inutang natin sa banko. Okay, so I hope that that is clear. So to continue, on December 13, no, we paid Meralco 3,560 for the month's electricity. Oy, ito, no, nagbayad tayo. Nakareceive tayo ng bill from Meralco, then binayaran natin agad. So hindi siya mapupunta sa utang, di ba? So for um, the payment, so kabawasan yun ng 3,560 para sa ating cash. Okay? bawas. And then bakit tayo nagbayad? Nagamit natin. Okay? So we used the uh, electricity. Okay? So pag nagamit natin based on our definition that represents an expense, 'di ba? We used the electricity. Okay? So expense kabawasan sa Junko Capital because of the utilities expense. Okay? So I hope na nasusundan niyo na ngayon class ay yung mga dinidiskus natin. Next, no, uh, December 14, okay? So, collected daw credit customers. So, nangulekta na tayo ng mga pinautang natin. Okay? Kailan ba tayo nagpautang? Actually, itong December 8, nang, nagpautang tayo, di ba, ng 33,250. Sa kami, mga pautang pa tayo last month. So, nakakulekta ka na daw ng 13,250. So, tataas yung cash mo dahil doon sa collections. And then, yung mga pautang mo in the account receivable, mababawasan na po. Okay? So, walang effect sa capital okay, because we have just collected our customers. Okay? Uh, December 15, paid transportation of office messenger. Okay? So, baka ikaw ay nag-send ng uh, something no, na inutusan ng office messenger, no, nag-transport siya. So, nung binayaran mo, of course, kabawasan yan sa cash mo. 990,000 decrease in cash and then okay um nagkaroon uh, po ng transportation na uh, gastos okay so it will be decreasing your capital okay so because we have transportation expense okay transportation expense okay Next, uh, konti na lang class, um, December 16. So, paid various petty expenses. Okay, so, um, small amount of expenses yung ibig sabihin yan. Iba-iba, no? Hindi na in-specify. So, mababawasan yung cash natin by 1,520 dahil sa payment. And then, okay, and then since may expense tayo, then kabawasan po yun kay Junko Capital. Okay, so um, we can use uh, yung tinatawag po natin na miscellaneous expense. Okay, pag nakakita kayo in the future ng miscellaneous expense, these are expenses that can that are not identified or other expenses po. No? So pwede rin petty expenses yung ilagay natin. Okay, for as long as that is actually an expense. Okay, and then last one, no? um, 17, we receive a bill from 
for the company's ad publicized in a magazine, okay, payable on January 11,100. Okay. So, ang kwento niyan, no, si company ni Jungkook is nag-advertise, okay, sa isang magazine. So, nung nag-advertise siya, okay, of course, um, we will be paying supposed to be yung advertising company. Pero dito, nakareceive pa lang tayo ng bill. So, parang bill ng meral ko yan, no, na pag meron tayong na-receive, hindi pa ibig sabihin na nabayaran. Kasi ang sabi nga dito, it was payable on January next year. Okay? So, kung next year pa babayaran yan, that will become a payable. Utang natin. So, magkakaroon tayo ng additional utang na 11,100. Uh, wag nyo pong ilagay sa utilities kasi hindi naman po utility yung advertising. Hindi rin po notes payable kasi wala naman pong initial na promissory note. So, accounts payable po yung um, best na gagamitin natin. And then, since nagamit na natin yung um, uh, publication dun sa magazine, then it means that we will have an expense. So, it will decrease Junko Capital by 11,100 because of an advertising expense. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear. Ha? Hindi pa yan bayad, kaya hindi po naapektuhan yung assets po natin. Okay? So, to finish this, no, so we have the totals. Okay. So, for the totals po natin, Okay, so for our cash, okay, wait lang po. So for our cash, we have a total of amounting to, ayan, 231,250. Okay, by the way, you can ano pala, okay, mag-post muna ako for a while. You can post this and then you can try to add everything. Okay, so pwede po kayong mag-post ng video natin. Okay? Ayan, so ako, ikukontinue ko lang ha, kasi you can post it naman. Pause it for a while. Okay? So, uh, for the accounts receivables, no? so lahat ng amounts natin considered, okay, we have 49,190. Do not forget class na yun, naka-parenthesis minus po yun. Okay? And then for the supplies, okay, we have a net amount of 16,700. For the prepaid rent, meron po tayong 6,000. For our equipment, we have a total of 89,120. Okay, for the accounts payable, meron po tayong totality na 76,100. For the utilities payable, meron tayong 1,250 pa na hindi na babayaran. And the notes payable will have uh, 100,000. Okay, our Junko Capital will have a total of 214,910. Okay, so yan po yung balance ng ating mga amounts. Class, kasama yung beginning balance. Ha? So beginning balance then um, plus or minus yung mga nanggaling sa transactions during the month. Okay? So, before we end this uh, example, no, so let's try to check kung tama pa rin ba that the asset is equal to liabilities and capital. So, yung asset po natin, okay, i-add nyo lang po lahat ng ating cash, accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid rent, and equipment. So the total asset would be uh, 392,260. Then it should be equal to our liabilities. So our liabilities, tatlo po yun. So the accounts payable, utilities payable, and your notes payable. So that would be a total of 177,350. And plus our capital, Okay, so our capital is yung Junko Capital na 214,910. Okay, so to verify kung equal po yung dalawa, so bring down lang po tayo, the asset is uh, 392,260 and then the sum of the liabilities and capital will be equal to same then 392,260. Okay, so that's for the transactions related to Jungkook uh, company. Okay, so I hope that this is clear, no? So we be ko mame yung copy nito, okay? Uh, to you class, okay? So that is example number two, okay? So 
to finish our discussion, no, I just want to um, reiterate lang yung accounting equation, but we have the expanded accounting equation na. Kanina po, in the basic accounting equation, it is equal to the asset. Okay? Uh, asset is equal to the liabilities and capital lang. Pero as what we have noticed, no, so um, if there is an income na na-earned natin because we have provided services, it increases the capital. So for me to complete the expanded accounting equation, no, uh, plus po siya dito sa uh, side ng capital, okay, expenses decreases the capital, okay, so minus uh, the expenses, okay, because we have used and incurred it. And di ba, withdrawals or drawing decreases the capital, so naka-minus po siya. So to to uh, materialize everything, no, you can use the basic accounting equation that we have discussed kanina, or even uh, the application para nung diniscuss natin kanina, which is also the expanded accounting equation. Okay, so dito um, mas madami lang kasi nilagay na natin yung other elements na income, expenses as well as the withdrawal. Okay. So we will give more examples of this uh, analysis of business transactions no, in our synchronous sessions. Again, if you do have questions about what we have discussed today, please let me know lang po on our respective chat boxes. Okay? So uh, that's the end of my today's discussion. I'll just see you on our continuation for some of our exercises or problems related to analysis of business transactions. Okay? So with that, I hope uh, that you are all safe. No? Stay at home, okay, and God bless. No, thank you very much, and have a nice day, everyone. Kamsamida, bye bye, sayonara.